It looks like I'm standing in front of a huge Frederick Remington painting, but I'm not. This is the real thing, Utah's famous Monument Valley. This is where John Wayne came to make movies to celebrate the legends of the American West. Well, NFL Films is here today to tell you a story of a descendant of a legend whose home was not on the range, but on the gridiron. And that legend is the immortal Newt Rockne of Notre Dame. And his grandson, Newt Rockne III, coaches down the road a piece at tiny East Carbon High School in Sunnyside, Utah. The greatest coach in football history is Newt Rockne of Notre Dame. From 1918 to 1930, the finest football talent in America flocked to South Bend, Indiana, to get a piece of the rock. Uh, there's been a lot of objections to spring football, and I, I object to it myself because I, I can see what interferes with your necking and drinking. I want you to play football because you like it. If there's any fellow here who doesn't like football, I want him to turn in a suit and get away because he's wasting his time. Rockne had five undefeated teams and the highest winning percentage in history with players like George Gett and the Four Horsemen. Along with victory, Rockne produced new excitement as he turned college football into America's foremost spectator sport. Notre Dame was the first team to travel the entire nation, creating its own Subway alumni, fans who had never attended college yet were loyal to the fighting Irish and their beloved Newt Rockne. Then, suddenly, at the height of his glory, he was gone. America's hero died in a lonely wheat field near Bazaar, Kansas, in 1931. Today, more than 50 years later, Notre Dame's Golden Dome still glistens with Rockne's spirit. His legend remains a tangible force on the South Bend campus, but his birthright has traveled far from home. In the magnificent desolation of southeastern Utah lives a football coach who understands the Rockne legacy better than anyone else. He is the master's grandson, Newt Rockne III. It's a big advantage for me to be where I am out west because I'm not in the shadow of that legend like I would be back in Indiana. Out here, people are going to go and, and you know accept me for who I am and it's kind of neat that I'm the grandson, but, you know, at the same time, there's that, there's that Western ethic, well, I'm going to take you at face value. I can kind of slide by, you know, and be myself, and people can, you know, take me or leave me. I really don't care. I'm not here to go and live up to anybody's expectations. You know, I'm, I'm coaching because I like to coach. Listen now, come here, Jason. Kicking off from the hash. Kick off this hash, back to that corner, the wind's at your back. Get it up Newt Rockne's grandson hey, coaches right at here, East right Carbon here. High School in the tiny town of Sunnyside, Utah. Yeah, go do it! We're, we're a small little school, we've got 137 kids. We are the smallest 1A school that plays football. Presently, we've got about 25 kids out, you know, kind of just pulling along with a bunch of little kids that run around and hit people. <laughs> You know, like I said before, I'm not coach trying to catch any goats. I'm not trying to fill anybody's shoes. I'm not trying to surpass anybody's record. You know, I'm going to do it because I love to do it. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Not because my grandfather did it, because I want to do it. You're here because you want a touch of the past. You want me to be that link. You know, you, and I think one of the biggest things I have about people is that they expect me to be some reincarnation. You know, that, that mystical being that's going to take him back to the era of the 20s when my grandfather reigned. You know, I can't do that. I, do, I don't have the charisma of my grandfather. I don't have his intelligence. But I know I'm special. You know, I belong to a special family. That's the proudest thing in my life. You know, I've got a heritage that is greater than anybody other, any other single individual in America. Nobody can touch what I have. I think of the sports heroes that comes out of the 20s, 
more than any other single individual, he will be the one that always remains. He will be constant. Now let's play clean. No rough stuff. When I say clean, I don't mean Molly Coddle party football. I mean without any muckery tactics. You know what I mean by clean. It's a mental attitude. In the 1920s, there was two recognizable voices. One was Will Rogers, one was my grandfather. After you graduate from school, Tommy, are you going to be a football coach, a bond salesman, or are you going to work? Going to work. That's the idea. Ever since I've grown up, they've made a comparison. Well, you're not as good as your grandfather, you know, and you're, you can't coach like your grandfather. And that's a, something I have to live with. You know, it, it's never going to go away. Whoever bears his name, that's going to be a part of the heritage that you're going to have to follow. That's the way it is for me. You know, and I've, I've accepted my limitations and my, you know, abilities, and I do the best with what I've got. We're obviously in a very rural rural situation up above the, the high school you know there's all kinds of wild game there, there's been bear spotted and cougars and mountain lions and right in the middle of our two-day session there's deer hunting with bow well shoot i lost half my kids this year because they took off for three days and went bow hunting that kind of bothers me that they aren't a little bit more committed hurry up we're wasting damn too much time come on let's go i really feel frustrated sometimes that our kids just don't take up the intensity that i think they ought to have you got to get your mind on what you're doing children are you through now okay kids are you done now uh, i felt really good about him coming to our program the community immediately became uh, real excited about football and especially the fact that we were going to have uh, uh, Mr. Rockney at our school at East Carbon in Utah uh, right from the big time. The whole community is sky high. We've had the biggest crowds this year that we have ever had. And the general feeling of the football team is sky high. The student body is sky high. Knut is coming into his own as a football coach. He is not Knut Rockney the first. He's Knut Rockney the third, and boy, we can't go anywhere but up. Number one, get a good attitude. We end have a good pregame. It's time to get fired up. Now, the success of any team, man, based on team play, sacrifice, unselfish sacrifice. These other fellas, they say, are pretty good. But I think we're better. Hey, they are fired up, they are ready to go, and they think they're going to kick your ass. And it's going to happen if you don't get ready. But don't forget, man, we're going to get them on the run, we're going to go, 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 go. And we aren't going to stop until we go to that goal line. Time to forget about all the cameras and all the other hoopla that's going on today and play a damn football game. Today, today, we're going to win. They can't lick it, and the best out of the goal. The first was going to win there. Fight, 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 fight. What do you say, man? East Carbon finished the 1982 season with six wins and three losses and made the state playoffs. Newt Rockney is pleased but not satisfied. The lure of his grandfather's legend drives him on. I remember going out to Notre Dame, you know, going out to the ball games on Saturday and just, you know, and it's an experience. You know, you, a, a Notre Dame football game is like no other. I don't care where you are. Back in October in, in, in Indiana, the weather gets kind of crisp and clear. And when you walk into Notre Dame Stadium, there's magic in the air. Always will be. Well, my ultimate goal is to coach in Notre Dame. There, there's no doubt. It's, it's always been, ever since I've been, you know, seven years old. I honestly believe I got to get to a college situation somewhere, somehow. And I think that has to happen within the next three years. For me, the goal, you know, I'll know when I make it. When I walk out of that tunnel, and I look down on my shirt and it says, Notre Dame staff, you know, and there I, I'm there. And I know I'm on the turf. Nestle Crunch. Presenter Viking quarterback Joe Cap engineered a 65-yard scoring drive by picking apart the Rams' secondary with two passes. Cap finished off the drive and the Rams on a two-yard rollout for a touchdown, giving the Vikings the win in the crunch.